I give you the floating block of wonder that's lit. Mwahaha. So, hey everyone, this is DJ Music, and I'm back for another video. Today, I'm going to be showing you a couple of map making features and stuff about the snapshot. It's going to be another map maker's guide. Um, this, as you can see in my F3, is the 14 week 11B snapshot. I didn't do a video on it yet because I figured there's a lot of videos covering all the changes and mostly it's just bug fixes. So I wanted to do a video just commenting on this stuff later. So as you can see, look at my little one of my worlds up here. Um, this is actually a new map that I'm working on. I'm going to show you it on this because I've actually used a lot of the new map making features that I'm going to show off in this world. So I'm actually just going to do it in this world and kind of show you a little bit of the game. So, as you can see, this is completely lit. If I build up again, you'll see it's still lit. It's just pretty awesome. Like, if I do it again, I can build up from there. I can build up from here. I'll just destroy this and uh, build up. You'll see it's always lit. And I'll do my little magician thing. Nothing up here. You don't see any cursors. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. And nothing there. So, you, you, I mean, something has to be going on. I mean, you can't just get this to work. Um, so the way that, that it actually works is actually a little invisible set block clock that I came up with yesterday. So as you can see here, if I place a block, any block, you'll see, whoops, <laughs> yeah, you'll see that later. Basically any block that I place here, this is where the clock is, you'll see that it just disappears. Um, that's only for this side because that's, well, that's where the clock is. So let's go over here. This is how it works. So as you can see, this is another one of the things. I place a block. This is not usually supposed to be powered. There's no way for it to be powered, but as you can see, it's being powered. And that's because there's a set block clock right where I'm standing. So this one sets the block in this direction to error. So that's all you need for this. Uh, you can also do error, error zero replace. This does work. Oops, if I can spell replace, it would work. Oh gosh. <laughs> error zero replace was spelled correctly. That'd be nice. You can see it still works. No matter what I do, it will still work. And then this one is the important tag. Um, so it sets the block where I'm standing, and then to a redstone block, and then data value zero, and destroy. I don't know why this works, uh, but when you do destroy that tag, it'll destroy it, obviously, but it actually renders it as invisible. Now, there are a couple of good things about this. As you can see, there's nothing here, so you can literally walk through it, which is kind of cool, because you can actually do, like, redstone barriers. So if you place, like, blocks um, on, this car on this edge, it'll be powered. So that's pretty cool. Uh, then there's also a couple other cool things. So there's this wonderful thing right here. Um, you can do wonderful lines. And this is just basically doing the same thing. Air, again, you can do the arrows that are replace. So you can also do it in this orientation. But I actually did not try how that works. The way that this works is you just set coordinates instead. Uh, resident block zero destroy and air. And that's the exact same thing, just with the coordinates that are right there. So that's how you do that. I forgot to mention that. But basically, if you do it, you have to do it on a clock. Um, so you have to run one of these clocks, a the hyper clock, and then you have to run these on the same clock. So just as long as you do that, then it should work. If it's replacing it and it just like spams out, um, or just doesn't run a clock that way, um, then basically just reverse the order. It's the same with these. Like if you do redstone block, oops, redstone block, and then you do zero replace, and then you go down here and you make this air, you'll see that it just kind of freezes. And this is a clock as well. Um, this is actually how I, I actually found the bug, is I in, if you inverse this, uh, this is the clock that I usually use, like if you break it, as you can see, this is the clock I usually use. Um, but if you inverse and add the destroy tag, it completely fixes it. So you can actually just do some pretty cool stuff. So that's what happens if you inverse it. So if, if a redstone block appears here instead, like that, um, then you just have to inverse the tags and then it'll be fine. So, advantages. This is just a regular clock, as I said. The air is on the bottom and if you break it, it just replaces it. This is the clock that everyone uses in their videos. Um, I've been talking to a group in chat, I'm in a Redstone group, and that's basically, this is the one that we've actually discovered a, a while ago. I've been using it on my maps, um, I've actually changed to another to the new one. But the only problem with this is your particles, as you can see, you do see particles. Um, it actually used to be that this would actually cause lighting updates, so these all would cause lighting updates when they update. So it's a lot better with this one because this is the exact same thing. As you can see, it is powered still. If I break this, I'm unpowered and powered, but there it looks like it's off. So it's pretty cool. Um, there is a bug. I don't know why. If you place the block here, it does actually um, like place. It creates the other clock, 
But if I place it there, then it destroys and it makes it work again. So as you can see, if I destroy this, then it turns off and back on. And same with this spot over here. So right now it's on and off. So these two are okay. I don't know why it's like that. I can't really test this one because there's not enough room. But yeah, and also this is, I, I was trying to figure out which sides work and I literally put them on all and they all work. So I don't know why. <laughs> It beats me, but this is a hyper clock, as you can see, um, and all these are not glitched, as you can see, by if I break them, if I do this, it still doesn't fix anything. I don't know why it does that. Uh, if I power it, then that will probably disable the clock. Yep, that disables the clock. Uh, let's see if I can break it. Nope, I still can't break it, so I don't know why it does that, but yeah, it's a little bugged. So let's go into here. Now this is kind of like my dark room, except it would be a dark room if I had, if I had my effects cleared. One sec. Okay, we're back. I'm um, sorry, I had a clock with effects. So, as you can see, it's completely dark in here. Uh, let me start this clock, and you'll see that it's lit. But as soon as I destroy it, it's completely dark room. Um, this was actually... I, I thought the way that it worked is actually that Redstone did cause lighting updates when I first built this. I was like, yeah, we don't have to worry about lighting updates. But I think they changed that in like the previous snapshot or something. So that doesn't have to be a problem anymore. But as you can see, it does work, and I can say hi. <laughs> Wonderful stuff in the chat. But yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, there actually is a bug. Like, if you leave it on and you break this and then break this, you'll see wonderful lighting problems. The way you fix this is just uh, stop the clock. That'll do that. Place the lamp and then um, just start the clock again. And you'll see that if you break it, it'll fix it. I don't know why. It's just wonderful lighting updates when you actually update the lighting. But if you look at F3, when this is off, you can see that even though the clock... I would. Uh, even if you look at the clock, it says lighting levels 10 here. I don't know why. It's, as I said, it's bugged. So if you just update it, and then it's fine. <laughs> and now you can break it as much as you want. But as you can see, the lighting level on right here is lighting level 0 for both. So you don't have to worry about lighting anymore. And yeah, I'll t the only thing that's lighting is, a, is this block. So yeah, let's go compare to the old design. Let's break out of here and go into here. So this is the old design. Um, if I start this clock, you'll see this wonderful redstone line. Um, this is actually fine because it, I thought it caused light, lighting updates. It does not, no matter where you walk, the lighting value right here is zero. So it's not too bad. Uh, the problem with this, as you can see, is that there are tons of particles. So particles do cause lag. Um, and this just might, if you have a ton of redstone lines, it might just be a pretty large problem. So you can fix that with this new clock, um, and just kind of do some stuff. So yep, that's this. Let me stop these clocks so it doesn't lag out. Because it likes to lag. Let's do this. There we go. Cool. So that's that. As you can see, it's dark and wonderful. Let's put these blocks back. Okay. So that's the new clock. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. As I said, if you didn't catch it, these are the two commands you run. Redstone blocks, zero destroy on the bottom. And air, zero replace, or just error on the top. And as you can see, if I go over here, these actually are all disabled for now. But as soon as I turn it on, You'll see that the it, you'll see like a little spaz out, and then it'll just work. So this is how you can check it. Um, because you cannot look at the resin lines to see if it's like working, you have to use lamps instead, which is kind of okay anyway because you probably should light up your redstone just because of it's, it's a good thing to do. Um, but yeah, that's how you can check it. If you put this anywhere, you can just like put a lamp next to it, and you'll see that no matter where you put it, it's still lit. So that's pretty cool. Um, and that works for anywhere, as I said. So that, that's all this stuff. Um, and yeah put the lamp back so let's go over to the next thing that I wanted to talk about so the next thing I want to talk about is actually regarding a couple of new concepts that I came up for uh, gameplay and stuff so let's just look at the items in my inventory so I have sword of the soldier I have a wonderful diamond pickaxe and then in my ninth slot I have drop items to commit suicide if I click you it'll kill me and give me an entirely new inter uh, inventory so this actually is a lot that's going on uh, but basically the way that it works is it actually looks at this block and checks your inventory for it, and then as soon as it deletes it, it will basically kill you and do other stuff. So this is all, the bottom line of this is all that matters. Um, actually, let me show you this first. So as I showed be before with the wonderful um, step lock clock that I came up with, this one right here is on that clock. Um, you can see by the little lamp that it's on. And then the ones next to it are actually do, uh, creating a, sub, a fill clock from the step lock clock. So it doesn't just work with step lock. As you can see, this is all being powered by the lamps, but you can't see it. So the fill, uh, the location, and then redstone block, zero destroy. 
then later you do fill with air. So as long as you do the redstone block first, then it will work correctly. Um, and then you'll just see wonderful, like this thing, where it's just completely empty. Even though if I place blocks here, like if I place this there, you'll just see it be destroyed. So it's pretty cool. Um, so the way that this works, as you can see, is that it's just a fill clock. But yeah, so you can use it with fill clocks. That's, that's the thing I was trying to get to. So let's move on to this. So player set, um, it sets everyone's with the actual inventory state, which is basically checking to see. I have another thing to, um, that sets your value if you have this wonderful red block right here. So if you have that block, then your inventory still will be one. Death block, negative one. So everyone's value will be set to negative one. This is just the reset to ensure that no one has a value of one from the previous round. Um, and then what after that, then it's going to uh, set a value of death block to one if you have the uh, a value of a oh, Minecraft uh, wool. So if you have a wool in your inventory with a damage value of 14, um, the S right here stands for short. That basically is just the type of field that damage is. It's a number and it counts as a short field. So it's a short tag. Um, if you tried 14, it would not work. I actually just learned about this the other day. I was like, why isn't 14 working? And yes, yeah, because you have to do uh, S. So right now, since I'm, I have it in my inventory, my value is one. Then what it does is it looks for um, any entity that's an item that has uh, these traits. So if that's a wool and it's a damage value 14, which is basically a, a red piece of wool, uh, it sets that value death block to negative one. So any item that um, any item that's on the ground. So let me clone this, and you'll see that as soon as I drop it, it disappears. That's because um, it's setting the death block score to negative one, and the next one is killing it. So this kills everything that's a uh, score value of negative one. This also includes you. So if this actually does not get reset back to one, so if your score stays negative one from this command block right here uh, into this one, it just doesn't do anything because you don't have the block, then it will basically kill you as well because your score is negative one. So that's why if I drop everything in my inventory like this, it'll kill me. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you have to make sure you have a fill clock on this because it has to run everything in order, otherwise it will not work. So you have to do this one, then this one, then kill it. Um, and then it sets everyone's inventory state to zero so that when you're respawning, um, if you respawn before you have the red block, it won't kill you again because I have it set so that it'll get, once it gives you the block, it sets your inventory state. So you have to make sure that you do that, otherwise it'll just keep on killing them if they keep on respawning without them having the block. So it's a good thing to have that check. And then finally it just sets the reset. It resets all of the death block scores. So I just have that just to clean the slate because every entity will actually show up on the scoreboard. So as soon as it kills it, it doesn't remove the entity. So the entity would just stay on there. So that's that. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, but that's it's just a really cool way because you can basically just have a block where you just drop it and then you'll reset to your spawn point. I was going to use a potion like where you just like splash a potion on yourself, but it just seemed like I don't really want to do that. I just want to like click, like scroll over to the block and click Q and it just works. So that's that. Okay. Now, if you look at my inventory, all blocks have been removed from your inventory. This is the next location. Um, I actually was used to use the pod for this and everyone hated it because if you, the server was lagging, it would take forever for you to respawn. So I decided to come up with a new concept for this. Um, I've already used it on two of my mini games and it works pretty well. So over here, we have another one of my uh, set block clocks over right here. This is the one block and two blocks. So this is actually just a redstone line that leads up to here. And we have this. Okay, we're back. Sorry, my alarm clock was going off. Um, so basically, the way that this works is it tests for a death watch score of one. And then if you're on the blue team. So this is the death watch variable or the death watch objective. Uh, basically, the way the death watch objective works is it just looks, it just creates a death count objective. So as soon as you uh, respawn, um, as soon as you die, this will increase by one. You don't have to respawn, which is nice, so you don't have to worry about the respawn time. As soon as you die, it'll set the score. So you don't have to worry about a pod. Like so Basically, if they stay respawned, um, that's the one problem with the pod. If they, stay re if they stay in the respawn screen, then it will never set the stuff that it needs to because they don't respawn. So this will work no matter what. You don't have to worry about them respawning. So if you like want to uh, want to decrease their value by um, one, if you want to like kill them, like set their lives to zero or something like that, um, you can just do it this way. You don't have to worry about pods or anything. So that's that. Then it's after test four and find someone with the death score of one, go over here. It's going to say this message. Um, as long as it's, it's only saying it to people with death, death watch score of one, which basically makes it so it only says, says it to people who died. 
after that, then it runs down here, um, which runs into this block black block right here, and the repeater repeats it over to all these command blocks right here, which actually these are not being run. All right, yeah, there's no, they're not. <laughs> these, yeah, I forgot to put these black. There we go. So all these command blocks are being run right here. Um, it's check, it's clearing all of the wonderful blocks that I have set. You can do stone swords if you want. So if you want to give them all armor, um, you can reset their stone swords. You can do the slime balls like I showed you before, uh, bows, anything that you want to do. So you can just clear all the stuff that you want to clear, and then it's kind of like a, a selective keep inventory, which is what I like it for because I don't want them to keep everything, but I want them to keep some stuff so you don't have to worry about, like, you can't just do slash clear because that'll clear literally everything. So in this, I want to keep the pickaxe, I want to keep all the armor, but you don't want to keep, like, the pick the sword because it might be, like, close to breaking, even though it has, I'm breaking 127, but, you know, that's, that's how it works. <laughs> so after that, then basically it runs right here, uh, which is a fill clock. Now this, not fill clock, a fill command. This fills all of the commands right down here. So under this command block, there's a row. And if I, I'm gonna try to show you. So you'll see the blocks like right here and under all these just reset to redstone block. Now this triggers all these. And all these commands blocks, um, all four of these just replace this with redstone block. So that'll basically run this all at the same time. And that'll run for all of these. So basically no matter what your class, this each one of these is for different class, It'll set your inventory specifically in that specific way. So the way that it works, it starts on this side. As it goes, this is the north direction. Um, this is south, so it goes from north to south. I don't know why; it's just how they programmed it. So first thing it does, it gives you a new soldier, or a sword of the soldier, and then I, you already have a pickaxe. So that's why this is blank. Third one, and this basically gives you this is the cool thing that I found out. So I, it's, it looks for a death, uh, death watch score. That's the correct class, and then it gives you melon seeds. Um, one, only one melon scene uh, with, the, with the value of zero and then this is the name so the way that I make it so it doesn't stack is if you set the name separately so I just have like three spaces here this one has four spaces and going down etc um, until the very end and basically this just ensures that um, when it gives it to you it will each will take up a different slot so when it clears your inventory it'll be in the right location so if I drop my wonderful nine whoops oh I'm in the chat menu if you click 9 and drop the item, you'll see all the items are given to the correct spot. Once you respawn, you don't see the melon seeds because it's already happened a while ago. So you can actually just like see, and they're already in the right spot. This is in the ninth slot, which is how I like it. Um, but yeah, it's just a really nice way to do it. So I'm just going to show it to you one more time. If I go to the right spot, uh, it's on this side, I think. Getting lost in my own redstone. You know it's bad when that happens. I am actually really lost. Hold on. Uh, it's over here. Yeah, <laughs> I got this. So as you can see, um, I'll just kind of do an overview. If I drop the item, you'll see this turn on, which will fill all those. There it goes. Just fill all of the wonderful things, and I'll respawn. Um, so basically, if I have any blocks in my inventory that are specified, it will be removed, and I'm lost again. There it goes. <laughs> I know where I'm going. So any blocks will be removed, and any other related stuff will also be um given and you can do custom stuff it doesn't have to be with inventories I just do it this way because this is related to the game but you can do a lot of stuff relating to that just because it makes it a lot it's just really easy to detect players that have died and reset their inventories to how you so choose um, so yeah also this all it does is clears the melon seeds out of your inventory so that you don't just spawn with melon seeds in your inventory because that'd be kind of weird um, after that then it just finishes this four tick delay and then it sets everyone's score back down to back to zero so that it this just turns off basically that's all it does is just to reset this back to zero so that when the next person dies it just is back the final thing that I want to talk about is actually related to this um, this is actually as you can see it's a slime bomb if I drop this that will it will make me blind for a few seconds and make my vision go all weird um, you could do anything that you want to I just did this for related to the game just because it's supposed to make you slow so it gives you slowness as well as um, a blindness effect for a few seconds and then it just runs out and you're good to go so this is actually possible with the new snapshot uh, with the execute command as well as setting entities to specific values I think with 10 is when that came out so the way that it works um, you have a little wonderful fill clock right here as you can see by that light um, and basically once the fill clock is on it's going to set all entities that are items their slime score, so this is the objective, um, to a value of 1. So it then the item data tags basically just check to make sure it's a slime ball. You can also check names if you want to do a specific name. 
uh, but I just want to work with anyone. So when you do this, it'll set anyone's with that within that general radius of uh, of a radius of ten um, to a specific, like basically to blind them, like that. Okay. So once it sets this value, this sets it every single time something happens. So anytime you throw a slime, it'll immediately happen, which is exactly what I want. So basically over here, we have the test for command. So basically, as soon as it's set, um, it's going to activate this because it's checking for a score of negative one. So just with, not just with players, you can run this on entities. Uh, so test for an entity with a score of one, that's a slime ball. So this, this will only work for slime balls, of course. So if you throw any other item, it will just not work. So if I throw my pickaxe, it just it just throws a pickaxe. So now that we have that, uh, once it finds a player, this will activate. And then we have the cool part. So execute, uh, this basically just runs it as the specific thing. At E to this location. So basically it's checking for an entity with a score of one and an item. So yeah, that's that. Uh, there's the three locations, so it's basically running on the exact location of the entity, and then effect all players. Um, it's basically just the command that you want to run. So as soon as you run this command, the last part is just the command. So I'm running it, basically making anyone within 15 blocks of this entity. Um, that's a score of class two, or that's less. That's less than two. It'll give them effect of slowness for 10 seconds, um, and then a radius of, or not a radius, a, a strength of five, and then this just basically removes the potion effects. So that's that basically just makes it so that it works well. Um, and then after that, this is all the stuff here. It just goes over to here. It kills the entity so it doesn't stay on the ground so people can't pick it up. And then it will just reset the slime score so that the entity doesn't have a score. Same as before. Um, this was actually the same thing as um, proposed. The at s was actually rumored for a while. And the way that at s worked, basically if the test for command would actually pass the at s to the next command block. Now this, it would be kind of cool because yes, you could actually like say test four at P and then would actually pass this on to the nearest player. Uh, but the nearest thing about, the nice thing about this is you can actually just set their value first. Um, and then this does the exact same thing. So basically I'm passing on this slime value to here using a scoreboard because anyone with a scoreboard value of one will be passed on. So basically if I, let's, if I wanted to um, pass on a random player, then I could literally just say this. So if you do scoreboard players set a random player um and then you just say it doesn't matter the data tags so you could say score or no let's just say random variable um and then one so basically it'll set a random player's random variable to one and then you could test for a random a uh, player with a score of one for the random variable and then just run it on the, all those players and then reset it right here that would work you could do that before now you can do it with entities, um, so that's definitely nice. So if you you can actually check that, and then you can also like if you want to make sure that it if they have like a specific block, so you can actually add a specific tag. So if you add, uh, if I can do this, I don't have it pulled up, so I'm gonna. I think it was like this. So inventory items, um, and then you say id colon wool. So I'm not sure if this is the correct formatting, but you get the idea. So if they have wool in their inventory, um, then it will basically it will check so you can actually do a custom check and you can actually do stuff like this um, and you could set their value to a random variable and then just pass it on before I go ending off this video I just wanted to end on a high note and show you one other feature just because I had a couple of new ideas so uh, basically this is actually kind of a thing that I've been wanting to do in Minecraft for a while there wasn't a really good way to do it uh, but now there is so as you can see I've joined red team and joined blue team in my hotbar if you look at the sidebar um, I'm actually joining the team. So if I, if I clicked on the slot one, then it's going to join team and it's a value of one. So I'm joining red team. And then if I click join blue team, then I'm switching um, to the blue team and my value changes to two. Now you can tell that I'm actually doing this in a way uh, that's related to the scoreboard because that's exactly what I'm doing. So uh, if I select the first item slot, it's setting my value to one. So at the second item slot, it's, selecting, it's setting my value to two. Now, if I move these out of the location, um, I don't have a check, so it still switches between one and two. Um, I literally am just checking the selected item slot, but that's the best way to do it. Also, this is the lobby. Take what you will. You probably can't tell exactly what the game is yet, uh, but yeah, this is the lobby. <laughs> Let's head outside, and I'll show you the actual four command blocks that this, is, that this requires if the clock actually works, which is apparently broken. Good to know. There we go. Okay. So let's head over here. And let's look at the four command blocks right here. 
So right here, this one is scoreboard player set, all players join team one. So it's setting everyone's um, join team one as long as their slot is zero. So if they're selecting the first slot, uh, which is under the name of zero, then it's basically making them, it's setting their value of join team to one. Same thing over here, except for it's slot one and join team two. Then it's checking the slot one value and making and joining all joining it to red. So if they're on, uh, if their value is one, then it'll set them to red. And if their value is two, then it will join the blue team. So it's pretty self-explanatory. If you wanted to make it so it actually required the blocks in the inventory, all you have to do is just make sure that the block is actually um, in the inventory, or you can check the slot using the slot colon tag. Um, but yeah, you can just kind of experiment with that using the new, whoops, <laughs> using the data tags and fun stuff like that. But this is just kind of like the ways you can do it. I figured you guys can experiment and be creative with it. Um, there's a lot you can do, so yeah. Um, but yeah, there's actually a lot of stuff that you can do with the snapshot. This is just a few of the things that I've come up with. Um, I just wanted to show it to you. And especially this clock, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it since it's kind of like a new thing. You can do some pretty cool stuff with it. And the fact that you, it doesn't like show that it's on is kind of weird because you, it doesn't look like it's on, but it is. I'm excited for this because you'll actually be able to um, like power blocks even if they can't see that it's powered. So stuff like this, this is the old way to do it. So you can see right here that there's um, a, a, a lamp. See, the lamp is on uh, because there's the arrow that you fire with a dispenser into it. So basically this is the only way to do it. You'd have to fire a dispenser into it because you if you don't want... So this could be in the ground and then you could just basically have um, the set block clock on top. And you can't tell that it's here, so it's pretty cool unless they actually place a block there. So it's kind of cool. It might be a little bit laggy, but if you wanted to like, if you had an area that you wanted to stay powered, if you wanted to like a ghost light or something, you can actually do it now. And you can actually turn it off and on. Uh, if you place a block here, it'll actually turn that off. And we place it back in the middle, then it will turn it back on. Just up after I destroy that, it'll turn it back on. So you guys can turn it off and on if you wanted to make it like a floating lamp. You can do that now. So yep, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you a couple of the new features and do another video since I haven't been doing a lot of update videos. Uh, but this map actually should be released pretty soon. I have a lot to do on it, of course, but I mean, it's like I call it my my little claw map since it looks like a little two little claws and lobster or crab or lo nope lobster nope crab crab I got this no kind of lobster because of the tail that's what I was thinking of but yeah you get the idea so <laughs> um I guess I'll see you guys all later thank you guys so much for watching uh share this with your friends if you found it interesting I'm trying to do some more videos like this just to, like kind of new concepts because it's kind of fun I've been co concentrating on the map aspect of my channel just because I feel like it's a lot more fun to make videos and a lot more interesting because it's not something else everyone else does so yeah also follow me on twitter i release some um like snapshots of some things that i'm doing so you want to make sure that you actually know what i'm doing and when it comes to filters um and other map making stuff i will release it on there first before youtube so you might want to check that also i actually release my filters a day before on my website so if you want to like get my filters before there's a video on them you can kind of see them on my website they've also all been updated so check them if you're having issues with them I had a couple of bugs that I figured out, and I also have a couple of new updates. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. It's kind of, kind of a cool update video for you guys, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye.